you know, I'm like 72 years old. And this whole idea of knowledge, understanding, that just never ends. You know, it doesn't stop when you're 50 or when you get out of college or, any, or after you get married, have kids. You have to continue, you know, to learn and to grow as you go along. Welcome to another edition of King Crush Thursday, the series where we highlight and uplift Black men, because frankly, not too many people are doing it. My name is Val Gay, and I'm super excited to bring this brother to you today. He is a native Philadelphian. He is an artist who has followed his calling. He is a painter who's regularly commissioned for high-scale works, as well as having completed some very prestigious residencies. His name is Mr. Jonathan Pinkett. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Val. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, sir? Wonderful, wonderful. Awesome, excellent. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you have agreed to join this conversation, which is one that I'm hoping to bust, hopefully forever and ever, the very narrow and stereotypical views that most of the media and a lot of community writ large, people writ large have of black men. Um, and so I'm hoping to shine a light on, on your um, demographic, if you will, through this conversation that is adding to our repository of six questions on our way to 100 answers by 100 different positive and successful black men. So thank you so much um, because ultimately I want young men, young kings, if you will, to come to this repository, see these same six questions and see a hundred different answers and hopefully find guidance because these men, young men may or may not have positive black male role models in them, in their lives. And then for the rest of us who are neither black or, or male to be able to look at this repository and learn more and um, hopefully to broaden our perspectives. So with that, um, I want to get started with the first question, which is what does manhood mean to you? Well, you know, manhood uh, to me uh, means, it, you know, it's a man that sets a standard for himself and tries to maintain that standard for others. Um, he, like he would be someone that, you know, can set an example, sticks to it no matter what, because consistency, you know, is a very important part of uh, being a man, to tell you the truth. Awesome. That's excellent. Thank you. So, Jonathan, who and or what is important to you? That's the easiest question I ever get, <laughs> you know, and that would be my mother. Um, when, and I can tell you why. When I was, you know, maybe about 10 years old, my brother and I had bunk beds and I was in the lower bunk. And that little square that the frame of the bunk bed created was like a canvas to me. And I used to draw on it all the time. And one night, my father, who rarely came upstairs, came up to the room he saw it all this scribbling on the wall and you know since my father was you know the king of the house to him that just meant oh my god you know here's something else i have to paint so he told me he said johnny don't i don't want to ever see you drawing another thing again <laughs> and my answer was yes sir <laughs> you know because uh that's how you answered it but my mother for um once actually, you know, sort of went against what his wishes was because she went and bought me a, a sketch pad, pencil, all that, and told me from now on, draw on this and don't draw on the walls and all that. And that allowed, because I would have stopped drawing right there because my father told me to stop drawing. But the fact that she had, you know, used a little bit of the grocery money to buy me the pad and the pencil and uh, set me up, you know, because I used to sit up under the kitchen table <laughs> in the kitchen and set me up with my little pad and allowed me to continue to draw. And of course, when my father came home, he takes a look and said, whoa, 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 where'd this pad come from? And she said, well, he's going to draw on that pad from now on. And, you know, her taking that stand 
was very important to me because I knew then I was obligated, you know, to uh, continue with what I was doing and, you know, make it worth her while. Well, that is beautiful. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So, Jonathan, how do you want us to see you? But you know what, uh, Val, I sort of have a one-track mind, and that's really in the direction of my work. Um, you know, with you know, very minor distraction, I'm just really focused on uh, what I want to do or what I want to be as an artist. So, you know, to me, you know, I'm like 72 years old, and this whole idea of knowledge, understanding, that just never ends. You know, it doesn't stop when you're 50 or when you get out of college or, any, or after you get married, have kids. You have to continue, you know, to learn and to grow as you go along, you know. And, you know, I, to continue on that road, I practice and I practice almost every day. And by practicing, I get good at what I practice. If I have bad habits and I practice bad habits, then I would have bad habits. But, you know, I try to keep my habits, you know toward my work, you know, toward my discipline, keep my health up right, get the right amount of sleep, <laughs> eat right. My wife is laughing right now somewhere. <laughs> but, you know, just to keep those good habits going, you know, so that I can still focus on my work and be able to do it. That makes a lot of sense to me. A lot of sense. That's awesome. So, Jonathan, what is your epic dream? My epic dream, you know, actually really doesn't apply to me. You know, what, you know, what my dream is that because I see this all the time and I'm sure you do too, is there are so many artists of color out here working and producing really great work, but they're like out there on the margins where it can't be seen or they can't be seen. And it is so hard to just continue to grind away at something, you know, like being creative, like painting, like drawing, like filmmaking and all that to, to become good at it. But one, nobody see it or the people that do see it don't have the right appreciation of it. And the type of recognition that you would love to have just doesn't always come to you. And there are so many artists out there that didn't give up, you know, didn't go, woe is me. And they just continued to work. Uh, you know, I was over in Camden uh, this weekend uh, looking at a group of artists work. And, you know, it's just it's inspiring and heartbreaking at the same time, because, you know, that every last one of those artists, if they had uh, a chance to reach their audience, you know, because each artist really has an audience, if they had a chance to reach their own audience or get into some of these really big art fairs or get in a banale in Germany somewhere or something like that, to get out there on that world stage where people could actually see their work and see what they were doing, it would be tremendous and it would be lightning. But that's my wish. You know, I spent some time on the margins myself and as a, every day, uh, not every day, but often enough, I see a lot of artists that just sits out on the margins and just never get, it's, it's only so many opportunities out there to begin with, you know, um, and it's just not enough to get everybody to fit in. But it would just be nice to see more of those artists that sitting out there, sort of in the darkness, pushed out into the light where they can be seen. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I hear you on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. So you've been, I think you have been answering this question all along um, implicitly, but I'm going to ask you explicitly. Mr. Jonathan Pinkett, who are you? Well, look, I'm an artist that's dedicated to what I do. And uh, with that dedication, of course, comes recognition, sometimes some money, sometimes a grant, sometimes residencies, and so on. But those are really you can very easily just fall into a hole and think that those things actually denote, you know, your achievement and stop, you know, creativity is hard, you know, and you can stop there. Whereas I really don't see those things. At, they're little nice, wonderful signposts along the way and all that, but they are not a quote unquote destination for where I'm trying to get to. Where I'm trying to get to is to be satisfied with what I do and, and, and satisfied and understand what I do. There's one characteristic about most serious artists, and that is they have a responsibility to what I'm going to call authentic, authenticity and truth. As an artist, I know as I start a piece or as I start to work on something, I know whether or not I actually achieved what it is I was trying to achieve. The viewing public, patrons, uh, uh, people that buy your work, they may or may not be able to detect that. But as an artist, in my heart of hearts, I know 
when what I intended to do actually shows up on that board and when it does not. Rarely that it doesn't, but I know that I have to stick to that truth, you know, at all times. Now, some artists suffer from that because they don't stick to that authenticity and they accept the first, you know, little attention and accolades that they get. And then they're miserable for the rest of their life because I know you run across one or two miserable artists, you know, and they're miserable because now that work is out there, everybody sees it and they know is really not the truth. It's not what they truly tried to be or intended, you know, sort of a, a private internal thing that any creative person knows. And they know more there. I've had people say, Oh, that is the most wonderful masterpiece I've ever seen in the world. But in reality, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? I could have pushed that further or I need to, that's as far as I could go this time. But the next time I'm going to have to go further because I know I can go further. That's Jonathan Brink. I got that. That's awesome. Excellent. So here we are already at question six, which is, is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't or you wanted me to ask you that I didn't? In other words, what did I miss? You, I did, between you and me, you didn't miss anything because the, the questions themselves uh, allowed me to be a little more introspective and to actually think about um, things about myself and about my past and hopefully in my future and things like that. It, it gave me an opportunity to sort of just to reflect on, you know, uh, who I think I am, <laughs> you know, as opposed to who, you know, I need to be and how much further I have to go. That's you awesome. know, so, but that's the question. That's Sometimes awesome. as an artist, you can get questions that uh, just, just doesn't move the the, you know, move the thing forward. It's canned questions, and the questions don't really ask uh, the artist, you know, those really important questions. That's awesome. You actually broke up a little bit there, but I think I got everything that you were saying, which is very good. Well, I am so grateful. So I have to say, you know, Having seen your work, it is absolutely amazing. I, um, I just, my eyes were blessed <laughs> by seeing your work, um, particularly one piece up close on the, your, one of your latest um, commissions, that portrait that you did. It was just really phenomenal how you, much you captured that person's essence. It was really beautiful, um, as well as your other work. Um, and just seeing you um, in, um, in action, doing your work in action is just really wonderful. So I just want to honor you, my king. And I just pray that your epic dream absolutely comes true. I'm so grateful for your mother who um, did at a time when people weren't really thinking about it. People don't do that these days. I always say to parents, did something that people don't do. Um, I always say to parents, um, if you see your child writing on the wall, don't um, tell them to stop writing. Just give them something else to write on. <laughs> give them something else that they can paint with or draw because they're an artist and they need to get it out. And even if no one else sees it but them, they need to get it out and they need to express it. And the world needs that. And so I'm so grateful to your mother for having that foresight and the courage, frankly, to, to be able to do that for you. And so wonderful. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, dear. Excellent. And thank you for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. And if there is a positive Black man in your life who you want to see highlighted in this form, please click the link below and um, or above, I think, um, and fill out the nomination form and we'll take it from there. We are on our way to interviewing 100 successful and positive Black men. Success is not defined by what they do for a living. They may be an acclaimed artist like Jonathan, but we are looking for people, men who are positive and are positively impacting their community from their nuclear family to the community writ large and everything and everyone in between. We want to highlight those brothers. So in the meantime, stay tuned for yet another King next week. And please remember to spread love and have a great day. Thanks so much. And thank you, Jonathan. That was really wonderful. Thank you. Take care.